Okay, this how-to video is going to go through how to define physical rules inside the Cadence PCB tools. Physical rules include things like the track thickness, whether you want to neck the track, um, and you can put a maximum length for that next track, what vias you want to use, whether you want to allow T-points, whether you want to allow vias to stack, etc. This is all going to be uh, set up inside Constraint Manager. Um, these rules can also be set up in the Cadence front-end PCB tools. Um, so you, there are other videos that are going to show you that as well, but we're just going to show you how to do this in, in PCB Editor today. So we need to launch Constraint Manager. We can launch that from a Constraint Manager command. We can launch that from maybe a shortcut key for that. There's an icon for that, Constraint Manager. You can see if you just hover over the icon, you get a CMGR shortcut. We can also do that from the Setup menu. So Setup Constraints, that would then launch Constraint Manager. So Constraint Manager is split into several different worksheets. Um, there will be other videos covering the other worksheets. Today we're going to go through the physical one. So let's click on the physical tab. And then this is then split into three separate areas. We have a physical constraint set, all layers. This is effectively where you would define any rules that you want to use. Um, there is a default rule defined with every board that you start with, and you can then move from that. We then have a net-based area. This is where all the nets, all net classes, buses, differential pairs, etc. Um, so if these have been driven from the schematic, um, these will be coming automatically like this. You can obviously create classes and differential pairs and buses inside um, Constraint Manager. Uh, in the back end and we can show you how to do some of that as well. There's also a region based area so if we want to have rules by area yeah, you can define an area uh, on the board and then maybe use a different rule set or maybe neck a track down. Um, BGA areas, flexi rigid areas etc are prime examples of this and there are other videos showing you how to do those type of uh, rule, uh, region definitions. So if we go to the physical constraint set, we'll start off with the default rule. Um, if we just hit the little arrow next to the default rule, this is split into the different conductors and planes. This gets driven from the cross section of PCB editor. So on here, I've effectively got a six layer board. Um, two of them are planes. Um, so you can actually define different rules for different layers of the board um, as you want to do it. Okay. In this example, we're just going to keep the default rule all the way through. Okay. So we'll have one thickness defined for the whole layer of the board. So for the default rule, I'm basically going to select the minimum line width. This is the track thickness that you would start with. We'll specify 0.2 of a millimetre for that. The maximum line width um, would allow you to put a maximum thickness that's allowed. You obviously can change the thickness on the fly as you're routing inside the Cadence PCB tools. Um, so if you go above that maximum value, you would get a DRC error. If you leave the value as zero, um, you can go to any thickness that you like and you won't see a DRC error. The minimum neck width allows you to effectively, when you're routing, you can do a right click neck mode that would take it down to this neck thickness. So let's specify maybe 0.15 and you can specify a maximum length for how long do you want to allow that neck mode to be allowed before you get a DRC. We'll specify 12 millimeters there. Um, we can also define uh, differential pair rules here as a physical rule. Um, you would normally define it as a physical rule if you wanted to change the thickness of the track going through the board or if you had rules by area in the regions you would use um, the physical rules for differential pairs um, this will be covered on another video so I'm going to leave these next uh, sections alone we'll then go to the via cell and we'll click in the via cell and this is how we would then divine, define vias in the design so here is a list of all the vias that are available or all the pads that are available in our pad path location so if we look inside PCB editor set up user preferences paths and library as a pad path setting and that tells the tool where to look for pad stacks. You can obviously use a filter here so I've filtered them um, the pad stacks by name so I can obviously have via and then give it a specific name and you can see I've got some different vias here um, to use or choose which vias I want to use. So in this example um, let's just add um, we'll add a couple of vias we'll have the, the 0.3 and the 0.5 size via we'll get rid of the default bar that comes with the tool so these are the vias that I'm going to use. By default, I would always use the, the, the one at the top of the list um, when I'm routing. We can adjust the, uh, the viewer options here to give us a slightly better view. So maybe if I just turn off maybe the surface and the mask layers, you can then start to see, we'll just zoom in here a bit. You get to start to see the definition of the via going through the different layers of the board. If you add blind and buried vias, you can always, you'll see those um, going through the board here. And if you wanted to use that functionality, there are other videos going to show you that as well. Once I'm happy with that, I click OK with the via list and that's fine. There are things like um, whether I want to allow um, pad to pad connect. So in this scenario, um, 
I can have stacked buys, more for a blind and very buy technology, whether I allow um, T points, um, whether I want to allow etch on a specific layer. So you can change these to false and then you wouldn't be allowed to root on those layers, you would get DRC errors. Once I'm happy with that, let's go and create another rule. So we'll create another physical C set. This time we'll call it power. Um, I'm just gonna change effectively the, the min line thickness. So I'm gonna root this at half a millimeter and I'm gonna put a slightly bigger um, min neck width. Everything else is the same, okay for that. And we'll go and create another rule, um, just as an example called RF, because I've got some RF routing on here. And I want the RF routing to be, um, let's set that at 0.35. Um, I don't want to be able to neck that down, so I'll specify a maximum width of 0.35. Um, and I'll leave the min line width at 0.35 as well, actually, because I don't want to change any that, that thickness at all. Once I'm happy with that, I would then go to the net based areas and then start to apply the rules. So I've got some predetermined groups here. So I've got a power group, I've got an RF group. Um, if I wanted to create a new group, so there's a couple of differential pairs here as well. Um, you can effectively either drag select. So if I wanted to make a, a different class here, I can drag select all the nets that I'm interested in, right mouse button, create. And then in this example, I could create a class or a net group. If I only had two objects selected, I could do a right click create and I could then go and create something like a differential pair. Okay, so you can do these quickly on the fly. Um, so let's just go and make um, a class. Let's just call this ADDR. I can create it for both physical and spacing rules. We'll click OK and then that makes effectively an address class at the top. I then want to apply the rules I want to use. So for my uh, power group, for example, I'm going to use that power rule. Uh, for my RF group, I'm going to use the RF rule. I'm also going to use the RF group for effectively um, for my address slides as well, just as an example. But you can obviously use global rules for all the different nets. You can also come in and make an override. So if I wanted to say this, this specific one here, that could be 0.3. You'll see that changes. It now goes to this kind of blue highlighted color inside Constraint Manager. There's pros and cons of doing it this way. Obviously, if you've not got many nets in a design, it might be quicker to just manually set up a few nets and set some thicknesses, and you can obviously drag select items together. The disadvantage of this is if you have to come and make changes, you would have to make the changes individually. If I, um, for this example, if I need to change my, my minimum track thickness from 0.2 to 0.3, I go to one place, I go to the rule-based area, I go to the default rule, I specify this is now 0.3, and that would then affect all the nets in here, apart from anything that I'd overridden. So, you know, any override would be a, an automatic override that would stay there permanently. So we'll just do a right mouse button, clear that override, and it goes back to the default assigned rule.